Are you trying to make strength and mobility gains with your leg training? In this video, I'm going to cover how I condition clients and myself for increased leg strength and range of motion. I mostly teach whole body pull push leg programs. They're very efficient, practical, and for the majority of people, they're great to get a sufficient conditioning response. Usually I only coach clients to have a specific leg training day once they've got three training sessions down per week. Otherwise, one to two workouts is more than sufficient to get a good conditioning response and that way you get a good exposure to a variety of movements. Once a client's at three times or more training sessions per week, then you can split the body up. The benefits of doing a devoted leg training day is to increase that next set performance. If you're just focusing on the legs, then you can get more attention into the movement. When you're doing split programs, you get increased recovery. So if you're training multiple days in a row, you're training the upper body, then the lower body, then by the time you come back to your upper body again, you've had more recovery. If you're doing whole body every day, you're not going to recover as well as having a split program. I separated my upper and my lower body training so that way I could focus more on spinal stability. I've got a significant neck condition so if I do multiple movements in a row I can do it, I just can't train as hard. I do leg resistance training one time per week. I use a lunge, squat and a deadlift. On another day I do power work for my legs so I do sprints and jumps. Then I do a long slow run once a week with a heart rate of 180 minus my age and that's for mitochondrial health. For all strength and conditioning it's best to use a full range of motion. This way you're stretching and strengthening at the same time. This is the easiest way to improve mobility is to strengthen your joints at the end range of motion. If you get stronger there then you're going to allow for your body to go a bit further and you'll increase that range over time. For the lunge, I like to start clients off with the split squat. This way they can control the movement, it's very simple, and I like to use a slow tempo. That way when they're going down into the movement, they can feel the muscles stretch out, they can get strong there, and then they can use a controlled tempo coming up. That way they have better activation of the tissues. Life is more distracting than ever. Getting into the gym and focusing on being in your body and training well is a great way to clear yourself of all those distractions and allow for a more optimal present experience. Usually a three to second tempo, meaning down for one, pausing for one, coming up for one, or somewhere between that and going down for two, pause for one, up for two, pause for one is great. If someone has a specific restriction and or weakness in a particular motion, then slowing the movement down, getting more time under tension there will help balance and stabilize that range. From the static split squat, I teach the step back lunge. That way you can get more hip extension and it's a bit more dynamic. When I go into stepping lunges, I alternate the legs that way when you work, you can have an even rest period. Whereas when you're doing one leg, you have to have a rest period and then do the other leg and have a rest period. It's not bad, but I just find it's much more efficient to alternate the legs as well as getting that cross body pattern going and the left right hemispheres of the brain working with the opposite sides of the body. I use the deep lunge position to stretch and strengthen the quad. You don't need a lot of load to condition the tissues. If you slow the movement down, you can make great gains in connective tissue and muscular strength. I perform lunges first in training as they're more complex. After lunges, I condition squats. I like deep, externally loaded double leg squats or using body weight in single leg squats. I don't load clients up with excessive weight to get a conditioning response. Most people have bodies that are fairly unhealthy in the sense that they're sitting down for long periods and the foods that we're eating are causing digestive distress and inflammation. Loading up the spine and the connective tissues with excessive load is not necessary to get a conditioning response. I like going deep in the ankles, knees and hips 
And if you go slow and control the weight and get great conditioning response with minimal to no risk, the more ankle mobility you have, the easier it is to go deeper in the squat, even if you have longer femurs. That knee going forward allows you to keep a more upright spine. If you have lower back issues, using body weight lunges, body weight single leg squats and single leg deadlifts will keep the legs super healthy and conditioned without the need to put excessive load into the spine. And this is a great way to keep your hips and legs healthy while you're regenerating the spine. I use a high hip position for deadlifts. I do this because I like gymnastic strength training and acrobatic type movements which require a larger range of motion. When you can recover effectively from the workout, then it's time to progress. The workout is not over till you're fully recovered and that's 72 hours later. I've wasted way too many workouts by performing unnecessary four reps. If you want to make your life easier, keep that one to two reps spare in the nervous system. For reps, I like using three to 12 reps on all compound movements. I like using three to six second tempos unless someone's injured, then I'll slow them down, use the eccentrics or isometrics. I use three to five sets and usually shift my rep ranges every four to eight weeks. For example, I might do four to eight weeks with three to five reps, four weeks of five to eight reps, four weeks of eight to 12 reps. For rest, I like using one to three minutes. A quick workout that you could do is three sets of lunges on the minute, three sets of squats on the minute, three sets of deadlifts on the minute. And that's in under 10 minutes, you can get a great conditioning response. Now, if you can do that every week for a year, you're gonna benefit far more than pushing yourself through these really heavy workouts that you can't do consistently. Strength training is great, but the best gains are made with nourishing food, good sleep, staying hydrated, great relationships, and most of all, enjoying your life. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you soon.